YouTube, what's up? I've got a very special video. If you've been in the gym, you probably already know that creatine is a powerful supplement. In fact, it's one of the most researched supplement with thousands of separate studies, separate meta-analysis studies on it. But with that being said, there's still so much that's misunderstood about what type of creatine to take, how much to take. So what we're gonna do in this video is answer all of these questions right here. This is your one-stop video for everything you need to know about taking creatine, taking it safely, and getting the most effect from it. So you can make some more of this, because that's what we're all here for, right? So let's get into the video. Before ever taking a supplement, I think it's really important to understand what that supplement is and what we're adding to our body exogenously. Simply, creatine is a molecule which is produced in the body and found in relatively high amounts in foods like meat, eggs, and fish. Creatine is also produced endogenously in amount of about one gram per day. And it's comprised of several amino acids such as L-arginine and glycine. Creatine is present in almost all cells and acts as an energy reserve. It simply does this by accelerating a process through which cellular energy, or ATP, is generated, which increases the amount of work our cells can do. The vast majority of creatine is stored in muscle cells, which is why supplementing with creatine is particularly effective for improving strength and anaerobic capacity. So now that we've answered the basic question of what creatine is, the next thing we need to ask ourselves is, well, what's the benefit of taking creatine? Luckily, there's been thousands of studies and many meta-analysis studies, which are really just a combination of studies where they try to eke out any statistical significance. And the findings suggest that creatine can increase total body water retention, lean body mass, and most importantly, potentially long-term hypertrophy through increased satellite cell and myonuclei concentration. A really interesting 2003 meta-analysis showed individuals ingesting creatine combined with resistance training obtained on average 8 to 14% more performance on their one rep max. And this was in comparison to a placebo group. Unfortunately, creatine does not affect everyone evenly. What I mean by that is there's three tiers. There's hyper responders, there's neutral responders, and then there's non-responders. Typically, a hyper responder is gonna fall into one of two or perhaps two of two categories. These hyper responders are typically gonna be starting with a lower level of total muscle creatine content. This could be genetic or this could be dietary from following a vegan or vegetarian diet. On top of this, hyper responders on average are gonna have a greater population of type two fibers and possess higher potential, which is gonna allow them to possess higher potential to improve performance in response to creatine supplementation. When we look at the effects of creatine, the fact that it increases our power and our anaerobic capacity, it makes sense that those higher in type two fibers are gonna get the most bang for their buck from creatine, being that these are the main fibers that are used within those activities. There are many different types of commercially available creatine on the market. Popular solutions are creatine anhydrous, which is simply creatine with the water molecule removed in order to increase the concentration of creatine to a greater amount than what is found in creatine monohydrate. Creatine is also popularly manufactured in a salt form, such as creatine pyruvate, creatine citrate, creatine malate, creatine phosphate, etc., etc. Creatine can also be manufactured in the ester form. A popular version of this is creatine ethyl ester, which is simply creatine with hydrochloride. A study by Jaeger et al. observed a 1.17 and 1.29 greater peak in plasma creatine concentration one hour after ingesting creatine pyruvate compared to isomolar amount of creatine monohydrate and creatine citrate. However, time to peak concentration and velocity constants of absorption and elimination was the same for all three forms of creatine. Although not measured in the study, it is questionable that these small differences in plasma creatine concentrations would have any effect on the increase of muscle creatine uptake. Essentially, it seems like creatine monohydrate is the go-to standard. Most creatine users believe that timing of the supplement does not matter. In fact, I used to fall into this same belief. That was until I recorded this video. After going through some of the findings, what I've eked out is that there is significance when it comes to taking creatine post-workout when paired with proteins, carbs, or just a high carb meal. The findings show that 100 grams of carbs or 50 grams of protein with 47 grams of carbs 
augmented creatine retention by 25%. Now there are quite a few people, myself included, who are at one point or still are on the fence about creatine loading. Many of us believe it's simply a hoax by the supplement industry, but some of the findings suggest otherwise. A fascinating study by Saul et al. found that a moderate protocol consisting of 20 grams of creatine monohydrate which was taken in one gram doses, evenly ingested at 30 minute intervals for five days, resulted in reduced urinary creatine and methylamine excretion. This led to an estimated increase in whole body retention of creatine by 13%, which may lead to seeing some of the positive effects slightly sooner when compared to taking just five grams per day. We know that creatine has benefits for improving strength and anaerobic capacity, but a common question is what's creatine effect on endurance or aerobic type capacity? Bazook et al. observed enhanced neuromuscular function of the elbow flexors in both electrically induced and voluntary contractions, but they found no endurance performance after four loading doses of creatine plus 15 grams of maltodextrin. And much of the other literature suggests that there is no benefit on endurance from taking creatine. A powerful latent benefit of creatine, which rarely gets talked about, is creatine's effect on cognition. Neurological and cognitive function has been shown to be improved by creatine supplementation. Rossin and Venezia reviewed the effects of creatine supplementation on cognitive function, and they highlighted that higher brain creatine has been associated with improved neuropsychological performance. Creatine supplementation protocols have been shown to increase brain creatine and phosphocreatine contents, and this is important for cognitive processing which is hindered from sleep deprivation or natural impairment due to aging. While creatine is one of the most studied supplements on the market, it's critical to note that creatine supplementation has been shown to reduce the body's endogenous production of creatine. However, it seems like levels return to normal after a brief period of time when supplementation ceases. Despite this, creatine supplementation has not been studied for a relatively long period, due to this long-term effects are really unknown, therefore safety cannot be guaranteed. Whilst the long-term effects of creatine supplementation remain unclear, no definitive certainty of either negative or positive effect upon the body has been determined by many health professionals and national agencies. On the note of safety, it is worth throwing this out there that if you do have a history of any kind of kidney disease, you may want to stay clear of creatine just because Taking it in high doses or taking it consistently for years upon years may be a bit taxing on the liver, kidneys, and heart. Some side effects of taking creatine can be muscle cramping, nausea, diarrhea, dizziness, dehydration, yada, yada, yada. Really, if you stay hydrated and you have a history of just overall health, you should be okay taking Creatine. A popular question in recent years is does creatine cause or promote hair loss? And a 2009 study implicated that creatine supplementation might worsen hair loss by increasing what's known as DHT, which is essentially just an androgen that does contribute to hair loss, particularly in males. If you do have a history of hair loss in your family, it may be worth steering clear of creatine because of this slight increase of DHT. What is going on guys? I really hope you enjoyed this video, got some value from it. If you did, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe. I got plenty of exciting videos on the way. Also drop a comment down below. Let me know what kind of content you guys want me to make. I want to make stuff that hits home for you, that provides you guys with value. So anyways, thank you for sticking around and making it this far. I'll see you guys in the next video. Sumner Healy, signing out.